Yeah. So as you know, I'm I'm just a normal Android developer. Uh, I'm the actual lead Android developer at my company, and I've had a chance to interview a lot of people. So uh, sometimes um, I hold a lot of interviews, and I, I was able to to see a lot of uh, people, a lot of developers that had different kind of mindsets, and it really helped me understand what's really important uh, uh, for for a developer to, to be successful. Now, in terms of what I do um, is uh, I, I'm working with my colleagues on huge applications at my current job. We have uh, apps with millions of users and hundreds of thousands of daily active users. And um, the thing is that when you work on, on, on such huge apps, you have to be really, really careful um, on how you actually deploy and how you have your, your entire uh, release um, pipeline, if you will. So we have apps that receive updates uh, every week and uh, there is a lot of work. We have this kind of startup oriented uh, strategy where we release really often and we have a lot of changes that happen every week. And that I, I would say that the, the most difficult task that we had is to come up with a, an architecture that would allow us to uh, develop features really easily and to have this kind of really easy transition with new developers because our team uh, grew um, exponentially. We had a lot of new developers um, that were coming in. Obviously, there were points where the team would shrink, uh, for example, with the COVID situation, when it initially it kind of uh, blasted everything and everybody was panicking. But um, I would say that generally our team grew and we always had to onboard new developers on existing projects, on huge projects uh, with hundreds of screens, hundreds of fragments and dozens of activities. And the architecture should be really simple and it should allow other developers to start working on features with much ease, right? You don't want them to spend a lot of time understanding the inner workings of your project, of your architecture. Uh, you want them to start doing and start shipping uh, features because at the end of the day, um, that's what's most important in such environments. Obviously, there are environments where uh, optimizations count and um, having perfect apps count, but at least in the one that I'm working on, it's really important to ship fast and have a lot of uh, features done really quickly and with uh, as few bugs as possible, obviously. So what we did, we kind of came up with this architecture where um, we have um, a basic MVVM, right? Um, so um, maybe a view where, where that is uh, an activity or a fragment and the presentation layer would be a view model and everything from that on would be the model layer, the repository, uh, maybe some use cases for the business logic. But the main thing is that we kind of borrowed some concepts from MVI and even from Redux and they were simple concepts that we could apply. Uh, the idea that the view model should kind of hold the state for our views, right? And should be the only source of truth for that state. And when that state is received on the, on the view end, so on the activity or the fragment, that view should bind that state and that state should be the, the kind of uh, single source of truth for it, right? So whatever state it receives, that's what it's gonna render, right? So this is really similar somehow to how Jetpack Compose works right now. We kind of tried to do this uh, with like fragments and activities and it worked really well um, because you'd have this kind of unique entry point where you would bind your UI uh, on your views, right? You would have a, a bind view state, let's say method, and you would receive a state and your job would be just to bind that state and make sure that the UI, the view, the XML layout, just um, it is really appropriate with that state that it received that information. And that was really helpful because we've had developers coming in and saying that, hey, thank you for having such a straightforward architecture. Um, it was easy for them to, um, to have this kind of uh, guideline, right? Where you would build new screens really easy, new features, new flows, because everything was uh, a bit more constrained in the idea that the activity uh, was uh, referenced obviously for an abstract component that would have generics and that would force it to have a certain type of view model, right? And at the same time, the view model would be constrained with uh, to, to have some sort of repository or use case and everything 
would kind of go uh, from, from the previous component to the next one. You would be forced to create components and to have this kind of really uh, interesting uh, way of building UI. So you would build a view and then you would have to build a, a view model, otherwise it wouldn't work, right? So we didn't want to uh, basically enroll people or developers that would come and would just uh, come up with their own presentation design pattern, right? With, with their own idea of architecture. Uh, even though we obviously change that architecture with their input, it, it's not nice to have a huge project with hundreds of screens with different uh, presentation patterns, right? It's not consistent. It's not, uh, it's not the way it should be. So we came up with this idea that we have a UI state and in, even in, with screens that had a lot of UI interaction, right? So a lot of user generated events, we would borrow this idea that uh, the view should send um, uh, some events to the view model and the view model will be that, that kind of a store where it, uh, you, it would receive the events and just mutate that existing state into a new one, uh, obviously corresponding to the event that was generated. And this is an interesting talk because there are developers that are that say that MVVM is, is like the, the holy grail, right? It's, it's the best solution and this one should be used. Uh, there are other developers that say that maybe MVI is better. And I always say that it's obviously depending on the context. Probably uh, most of the time, a simple MVVM is going to suffice, right? But there are cases where you have a lot of interactions on specific screens where MVI makes sense. So it's not that, I mean, everything is contextual, right? Uh, you don't want to say that A is better or the best or B is better or the best. It obviously depends on the project, uh, the requirements and how, how the kind of uh, the, the UI is built around that, right? So we would have screens where we'd have a lot of UI events and we would create a sort of unidirectional flow of events and data, right? Just to make sure that we don't have multiple entry points that would either mutate the state or would obviously uh, allow the, the view model to change that state from different other methods, from different other entry points. And this would go the other way around with the concept of state. So the view would receive the state and it wouldn't have multiple entry points where it would bind that state, right? It would have a central entry point. And this is really similar to, to Compose and we will, we will explain this uh, a bit better when we get there. But uh, yeah. So, uh you were implemented this before Compose came out. Yeah, so what we kind of tried to do is have this sort of unidirectional uh, idea flow of data and events uh, oriented uh, towards fragments and activities. And it worked out really well. It was obviously not the perfect match as nothing is obviously, but it worked well because it had this kind of idea of state and UI that binds that state. So uh, I read your blog post about this earlier. You also took the same approach over to a Jetpack Compose later, right? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. it's basically a, it's basically MVVM with um, concepts from MVI implemented, or is it just ho completely MVI? No, it's it's uh, again. I I wouldn't really say that you can. I, I don't think that maybe MVI like a, a bare bone MVI makes sense in the context of Android. I would say that uh, all the architectures that I've worked on started off from MVVM and where I felt that I could improve something was just by borrowing some concepts exactly as you said from, from MVI because there were ideas that, that helped us centralize and have unique entry points into our screens and it made sense for those screens that had uh, 10 or 15 uh, events or very complex states that have to be managed. So there were a lot of uh, side effects that would happen. And we kind of tried to go around the idea of having illegal states, uh, mostly due to the imperative paradigm that the, uh, the view system has, right? And com Compose is a bit better. It, it works on the declarative paradigm. So it's, it's, a, it's a much better fit, right, to, to this. But again, it's all about context. It might not make sense for some projects. Hmm. So I don't really have any experience with MVI, only that I've read a little bit about it. But the thing is, for example, in my in my hobby project, which I have on the Play Store, I take a lot of input from Gabo Varadi, who, uh, who is a really uh, smart, you know him he, on, from yeah. Twitter, right? He's a really smart developer and I trust him with a lot of stuff. And when I built my app and 
try to improve it and try to improve the code. When I uh, come up with a concept from MVI and I'm considering implementing it, he usually has some alternative for it that often seems simpler. When I, for example, as again, I don't really know how MVI works, but what I see is that there is this method on the view model where you pass in an event, which is a sealed class, right? Yeah. And what I don't really get is what's the difference of that between just calling methods on the view model that you put directly as public methods in the view model? What's the benefit over this uh, method that takes in a sealed class? Yeah, so I think that this is a great question and we kind of, I've kind of tried to approach this in, in, in the past. And what you're basically saying is that why should I have this kind of uh, central flow of events that comes into my view model, right? And why can't I just have some methods that are called by the view? Uh, so the, the, the view just calls the methods on, on the view model and that's it. And I would say that 99% or maybe 95% of the cases, it's, it's enough for you to have a few methods, right? Uh, that mutate the state of the UI in the view model, right? So it, it would make sense what you're saying. Now, what we faced in some of the screens that were really complex, we were ending up with so much presentation logic in the view model. And I, I'm just saying that it would have uh, maybe hundreds of lines of presentation logic. Uh, and the idea was that the view would have so many uh, entry points to mutate the state, right? So it would have 10, 15 methods, depending on the events that it would trigger into the view model. And the view model would have so many methods on which the kind of um, it would allow it to mutate the state. And that just becomes unmanageable after some point. It works um, for simple screens. It all works for maybe medium complexity screens, but for screens that have a lot of interactions, it just makes more sense to have uh, maybe a, a sort of uh, universal uh, catcher of events because it's really easy uh, to scale. R why is, is that? Because you just add a new type of event and then you go into your view model in the actual method that knows how to catch those events, how to uh, maybe uh, intercept those events, right? And you just add a new case, right? Just as you said, like like a, uh, like a sealed class. But the main concept here was that you would have a unique entry point that would cause the UI to, to mutate. And it would be easier to, at some point, just add two or three more uh, events, right? You would just uh, maybe uh, trigger those events from the UI, and then you would go to the view model and define them. You didn't, you, you wouldn't have to go and all the time just call view model dot another method, view model dot another method. It would just be redundant, and uh, you would have so many methods into your view model, and you wouldn't really know uh, which method does something, maybe mutates the state, or maybe another method creates a side effect which is different and everything would be really uh, bundled together. So again, it makes sense for those screens that have high complexity uh, or a lot, of, a lot of presentation logic. 